Let's review now how can we process LiDAR data using our software Global Mapper. So in this case, I wanted to show you first six free sources of LiDAR data. For example, we have open topography, we have the United States Geological Survey Air Explorer, we have the United States Interagency Elevation Inventory, we have the NOAA Digital Coast, the LiDAR Online, and the National Ecological Observatory Network, or NEON, we had, which has a quite impressive uh, data set of LiDAR. I regularly use open topography, but you can use any free data that you consider to, to practice, or if you have commercial data, you can apply it as well. In this case, I'm gonna use the data from open topography. So what we can do, we have several, several surveys, as you can see, for example, let's go here. We have a lot of data here. For example, here, I like this one because we have, because we have a, a lake within, so we have a certain uh, amount of data. So we click here and select. It goes right here. Here we have the information of the data, the survey date, the horizontal coordinates, the datum, the geoid that they're using. So we click here and we go to the point cloud. Here we select a region and check out. In the free account, we only have access to 50 million points. In this case, the area that we selected at 89 million. So let's check out a smaller area. Might be this one. Maybe this one, six million points. Let's select for the purpose of education. Let's select a smaller area here. Here we have 3.2 million points. We select all data on classified and ground. We select the format. In this case, the regular format for LiDAR data is dot last. We have we can have last with a C at the end and a that means that it's zipped, or we can import the point cloud data in ASCII form, that doesn't matter. In this case, we can calculate team. Yes, we can select the gradient resolution, the maximum triangle size, and the format that we wish that the image had. In this case, I wanted a GeoTIF because I wanted to uh, keep the, the, the reference and geographical information then we can generate additional color relief from colored heel shades. We can generate KML files in case we wish to view it in Google Earth. We can generate a heel shade and slope grids in grid format. And after that, you select, you put your job titled and your job description. And in this case, you will receive the data. Here we have the results. We click here and we download our point data. Here we have, we have the tin, the them in a tin format, and we have another download here of the tin as we can see here. After we have downloaded our data, we can import it to Global Mapper using the import selection. We have to create a, a grid point cloud. The gridding method is going to be tied. That means that points that are close are the ones that count for the interpolation. 
you can select the bounds in which you want to import it. Use, you can use your, your the intensity values for near infrared channel. You can estimate the RGB color if missing. And you can select which classification do you wish to import. And if all the lighter returns do you want to import, first of many, second of many, last of many, first, second, last, unknown. You click OK. And we have our data imported. As you can see, we're working with a lot of, 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 of data. We can select a 3D window. To have a better understanding, we have to decrease the vertical exaggeration a little bit in order to have a, a true meaning of the data. In this case, let's select less than Let's have this one, for example. Okay. As we can see, we're mainly in a wooden area. We have vegetation. We have here what appears to be a pipeline or maybe a no, an electric service line. And here we have some lakes water so we mainly have water vegetation and an electric line here we have what appears to be a couple of infrastructures here we have a building and here we have another building in this in this part here here we have some small buildings so we can classify it as ground electric services and vegetation we don't have that we have mainly two types of vegetation high and uh, the ground per se so we don't have intermediate vegetation as we can see so the first thing that we do is we select and check the metadata we have the number of points the memory, the samples, the point spacing, we have 0 0.29 meters per uh, point space, the border coordinates, the projection, the load time it takes the software to load it, the minimum elevation, the maximum elevation, the datum, the software which it was processed and generated, and the flight date, well in this case the one I'm, I'm uh, using right now and we have the histogram we can select generate a histogram from the points depending on the intensity return class elevation for example if we generate an Instagram about um, points the uh, class class point class we can see that mainly all of them are within unclassified and ground if we have it here in options, we can use display, we can alter some uh, values, we can change the projection in case that we want. If we did attributes, we can um, change also the, the classification of a point manually, we can change from brown to unclassified, as you can see, the class one is unclassified and the second class is uh, ground. So basically, this is the most important data of a uh, lighter. We later select these auto classify points. We can change the um, the non-ground points, for example, minimum height for local mean non-ground point. That means if a point is large, higher than this, we can count it as a non-ground non point. Removal of uh, buildings, for example, or vegetations. We have the maximum height delta for uh, we can use higher values for high relief areas. We can spect the slope, the spected slope of the terrain. 
and the maximum building width it's around 100 um, points we can reset existing ground points to unclassified so we can reclassify the data points because we have uh, uploaded and we don't know if um, they're correct so we generate first classification and later on we can uh, continue with the rest of the process. Now that we have our points classified, we can filter that and disable all and just select the ground points. As you can see, the ones we lower elevations appear. If we select a 3D model, we will see that mainly all vegetation, buildings, and all that uh, other features are basically gone so we can deselect that even the wire data has disappeared we have a terrain model right now so we can uh, later on you can also change here in this pan you can uh, view it by RGB elevation mainly by elevation selected by intensity take a look that it resembles more of a um, of the element we can see it then by classification in this case mainly ground points return number here we have more returns since we have a vegetation we can uh, uh, observe that we have more returns if i select a point I can see the, its elevation, its class, intensity, scan angle, return count, number of returns, the source ID, the density, and all that information regarding each point. I can class out of classify non-ground points. I can also extract vector features for the light, lighter dot clown. I can extract the three points, for example. I can extract the power line features and I just need to introduce the parameters of these elements. I can extract 3D building footprints and all that information in order to perform separate analysis in case you were doing an urban analysis, uh, power line analysis or a tree analysis for forestry purposes. We can also create a 3D model from these selected LiDAR points we can find duplicate lighter points. This is very useful to perform at the beginning of the exercise. In this case, since I downloaded from an open source, they performed that operation before they uploaded, so I didn't need to do that. But in case you're working with your own data, you can find, or that you have uploaded many data and you're not sure if you have duplicate points, you can check it here. You can filter here the, the data and you can also perform a very important activity with this. I'm gonna select first by elevation, and now we're gonna create a grid from that point cloud. We're gonna call it elevation grid. It's gonna be in meters. We are gonna use a digital terrain model and we're going to use not the intensity, not, not any of the classification, but the elevation types. It's the information that we're going to use to make the interpolation. So here I select the amount of spacing field that I'm going to give these particular features that have no points. In this case, I want it to be really, really... Um, um, I want to close the gaps, so in that case I select OK, and here we go. I have a dem relating the elevation grids. If I click now a 3D view, I see that I have a digital representation of how the earth or how the ground is behaving in this particular part without taking into account vegetation or any other feature as we can see. Later on, we can generate the contours each two meters.
And here we go. We have now the elevation grid that is referring to the ground at this particular point. If I wanted to have uh, all points, for example, I could also create a new feature that globals that globals the lighter data. Yeah, for example, this is the area of the lighter data, and I could select this lighter data, this uh, particular polygon, and download a world image imagery for this particular point. See, great. Now I have an idea of how it's the um, how, what's how's the imagery here at this at this point. I can see that I have some houses right right here. I can use this tool in order to to if I want to make some interpolations and some analysis. I can perform this, and most important, I can use this tool which is colorize, apply color to lighter points from the image above. So I'm going to colorize the points. And if I turn these, I'm going to obtain the representation, lighter representation of the point. But let's give it to another level. Let's enable all data points. And let's colorize the whole image. We have now a 3D representation of the area, which is pretty, pretty amazing. I still love how it looks, the presentation, the features. It all is, it's all very, very, it gives, if you want, if you're trying to present an idea, or maybe some representation. This should definitely do the trick. I always like this perspective on lighter points. You can also create your own view. For example, you select a line feature. Let's imagine that you want to apply along and we can generate a fly through. For example, we can have a certain elevation, generate fly through data, we can generate the average velocity. In this case, let's select around 50 meters per second and we click OK. If we select a 3D view and we play the fly over through, we can see that we are basically at the same level of the data points, but we can generate a movie regarding the data points. And if we want, we can change that path and we can increase the height, for example, let's do it at 50. And let's do 50 here, okay. And we then generate a 3D view again and we play Here we have a higher representation of the elements, in case you wish.